Hey, welcome back to a new episode of this JavaScript show whose name I can't figure out what to call it. Uh, I actually need your help for that. So if you have any good ideas for a name for this show, uh, please do let me know in the comments or just reply to me on Twitter. I have a few floating around so far. One is uh, JavaScript uh, Joy, one is JavaScript Bits, one is JavaScript News, or JavaScript Log, like JavaScript Console Log. Uh, but that's kind of like the opening segment of me trying to ask for your help. Uh, before I forget, this is the week of uh, September 18th to September 24th, which means that there is a week of time where things happened in the JavaScript world. Quite exciting and deedly, deedly, deedly do. <laughs> Let's get started. First thing to talk about this week is that CoffeeScript 2 has now been finally released as a final version, not a beta, not an RC, but final. And that's really exciting because uh, CoffeeScript 1 has been around for quite a while without that much of an update and having it actually be released as a final version is always a great thing to see. The big, uh, there's three main big things in CoffeeScript 2. The first one is that uh, CoffeeScript syntax, which in many ways influenced modern ES6 plus syntax, now compiles just two modern ES6 uh, syntax. Without CoffeeScript, there would have probably not been a big push for ES6, so you have to give credit where credit is due, so thank you very much CoffeeScript for that. But now that the syntax actually exists, you can now have CoffeeScript go to ES6 syntax, and if you still need to support legacy browsers, then that would then go through a Babel or whatever transformer you want, and out you get ES5 syntax. That's awesome. CoffeeScript 2 now supports async functions, that's awesome because ES6 also supports that. The biggest thing, again, which I think is never highlighted enough is that there are not that many breaking changes from CoffeeScript 1 to CoffeeScript 2. No. That means that your CoffeeScript 1 code bases can be upgraded to our CoffeeScript 2 code base without that much work on your behalf. So enjoy upgrading. The new features look awesome and it's great to see projects keep on living. Second big news piece of the week is that Safari 11 was released as final and there are some really cool features that are included in Safari 11. The first one is that it now supports WebRTC. If you're not familiar with that, it's a way for actually doing peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, communications across browsers. So rather than having one browser go up to a server that then the server relay that down to another client, they can just talk directly to each other, which means that you can do a lot of very fancy uh, applications using this technology. That's been in Chrome and Firefox for a while now, and having it be brought into Firefox, sorry, being brought into Safari is a big win for that technology so you actually have it support across all the major browsers. Second big thing is that it now supports WebAssembly, and I'm sure you've heard of that before, WebAssembly being a compiled to target for C or other non-JavaScript uh, languages, and the fact that Safari now supports that is going to be very exciting for the development of that spec. Uh, and yeah. I have other bullet points, but that's about the big things from that. Uh, Safari 11, very excited to see the browsers continue to get updated and uh, be maintained. It means that you'll have less work to do when you're making your own applications. And number three, we have the oft talked about React patent situation has been finally put to rest. I am so excited about this because for two months, and I checked, at the original GitHub uh, issue that started this whole thing, it's been two months that this React patent issue has been talked about in the ecosystem. And in case you don't know, so uh, React is now relicensing itself from BSD plus patents to just MIT, a very permissive license that has come after probably WordPress announcing that they're going to start migrating away from React, a very big player on the web application space, having their weight against the React license definitely pushed Facebook's hand, in my opinion. So having that there and having uh, Facebook react with the benefit of the community in mind is just going to be great for everyone involved. So it's going to be React, Jest, Flow, and Immutable JS all relicensed to MIT. There are other Facebook codes that are not going to be relicensed yet. In the blog post, they say that they are going to investigate how to and when or if they're going to do that. But for now, having those four main things be converted over to patents, uh, have be converted over to MIT will make it a lot less scary for most companies and uh, startups to use React in their application. 
huge win for the community. Very excited about this, and I'm just also very excited to not talk about it anymore because I want to code sometimes, I guess. I don't know. Whew. Well, that was the week of news. Hopefully you have been caught up on some of the big events in the past week. Please do let me know what you think about the name because I am very decisive and anything that you have to input would be most appreciative. Having a name will also let me brand this a little bit better and actually like settle on something and push forward. So uh, your input is most welcome. And again, please do comment, let me know how you like the video, talk to me on Twitter, anything that you wanna say, uh, I am down to hear. So without further ado, see ya next week. Your existing CoffeeScript 1 code bases can just be updated to Scott Cutler. <laughs>